um, the video for a little bit so that you know at least who's behind the screen today. Um, I think we are at 62 participants at the moment. I can see the number going up, but we'll just um, jump right into it and then whoever's joining is joining, let's say. Right. Okay, I can just tell that the host has disabled me from sharing my screen. Is there any way we can enable that so that I can share my presentation slides? No, you can. Just try again, please. Yeah. Right, so that, this gives me a message. Uh, host disabled attendee screen sharing. Okay, apparently there are still some people who cannot hear me. So we'll wait a minute until that sorts itself out, hopefully. I'm just messaging Sana about the screen sharing. Let's see what she says. Right, so Sana is just going to take a minute to enable me to share my screen because I have some slides prepared for you so that you don't just have to look at my face for the next hour and uh, just hear me talk, but at least you have some visuals and something that helps you hopefully understand and organize some of the ideas. So apparently the sound is going good for you guys. That's great. Uh -huh. And now I can share my screen as well. That's perfect. So we can jump right into it. Lovely. And there we go. Great, so you should be able to see my screen now, is that correct? See what the chat says. Yes, it's clear, correct, perfect, nice. Let's go for it. All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, so my name is Sabine Bastisch. I'm a business communications and soft skills coach based in Tunis, Tunisia. So we're neighbors, let's say. Uh, from what I understand, most of you, or potentially even all of you guys are based in Algeria. So not far off, we can almost wave at each other from a distance. Um, so yeah, so thanks to Light Club um, for inviting me to host this session on communication skills and teamwork today. I was really, really excited when I got your message um, and I'm really happy to share this with you today. Uh, first of all, congratulations on this initiative. Uh, I'm always super happy to see, you know, students, the younger generation taking the initiative um, to learn about everything that university or teachers may not tell them or teach them in the classic curriculum. So yeah, I'm always really, really happy to participate. Uh, it's exciting as well because this is my first time working with an Algerian organization, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. As you can hear, today's session will be in English, simply because my English is better than my Arabic 
and my Arabic is also very, very Tunisian, I guess. Um, so I wasn't sure how different the dialects would be. And as you know, English is not only an international business language, but it's also the language of science, pretty much. Um, a lot of the research that we are going to talk about stems from Anglophone researchers and scientists. Um, so why not use their original language to talk about these topics? Lovely. So to give you a little idea on who's in front of you today, um, as I mentioned, I'm a business communications and soft skills coach. I'm originally from Germany and I have been living and working in Tunisia for the past five years. Um, I do mainly corporate training. So most of my clients are companies or organizations that are looking to train their employees and their teams on different non-technical topics. Um, I also attend conferences. I speak at events, um, sometimes in the media as well. So I've put together a little slide with some pictures of myself that show what my work usually looks like. Obviously, at the moment, my work is very digital as well. So I often sit behind my computer for some Zoom sessions like we're doing today. Great. So today I want to talk about teamwork. So when Light Club asked me um, if I could do a session on teamwork, I told them absolutely I can. However, I can also tell you guys many, many things about communication skills. So what I decided to do for today is to start off with a general introduction to communication skills that can sort of serve as a base to understand teamwork. Because without communication, nothing happens. I mean, you guys all know it. You cannot not communicate. Um, every time you work with other people, every time you collaborate with team members, friends, colleagues, um, and so on, you always have to communicate. So there's no point discussing teamwork if we don't talk about communication. Okay, so that's why I will start off with a little introduction. In communication, it's all about messages. So why do we communicate? Because we have a message to deliver. We have something that we want to convey to another person. Usually our messages should be pretty clear. However, there's also plenty of opportunity to go wrong and to make mistakes. What I would like to talk to you about are the four sides of a message. So the four sides of a message is a concept developed um, by a German, actually, um, psychologist and um, sociologue who came up with the idea that every message that we send actually contains four different sides. So on each end of the message, we have the sender and we have the recipient. So someone who sends the message, someone who talks or writes, um, speaks, and someone who receives this information. Right. The first part of every message is the factual information. Why do we communicate? Because we have some facts that we want to deliver. You want to tell your friend about a certain piece of information or you want to share some facts with your colleagues, for example. The second part that we have in every message is the relationship. So there's always a relationship between the sender and the recipient. And based on what that relationship is, the message can change. To give you a very quick example, you wouldn't talk to your boss the same way you talk to your friend or you talk to your cousin, right? You change and you adapt your message based on the relationship and vice versa. Your relationship is also built through the messages that you send. So the way you communicate with someone can either strengthen a relationship or it can also damage a relationship. The third side of a message is what we call self-revelation. With every message, you also reveal, you tell something about yourself. That can be something about how you feel about a situation um, or what your view or your perspective of a certain topic is. That means that, for example, when you talk to someone about a problem, you might be communicating that you are worried about the situation, which is why you are sending that specific message. Last but not least, we have what we call the appeal. It, can, it is sometimes also called the call to action. So with every message, we want the other person to do something. We want the other person to react. We want the other person to either be compassionate and show us that they understand what we're saying, 
or we could also require a certain action from their side. So to summarize, we have the first side, the factual information I want to deliver to the receiver. What I think about you and what our relationship is. What I reveal about myself, so what I tell you about myself. And what I want you to do, so the action I need from your side. Let's have a look at a little example. There is something green in my soup. All right, a very simple sentence, something you have maybe said yourself in the past, maybe something that someone else has told you in the past. There is something green in my soup. Now, this message, as simple as it is, contains four sides. The first side is the factual information. So I'm telling the person I can see something of which the color is green inside the soup in front of me, just some facts. When I talk about the relationship, if I tell the sentence to my mother, for example, who cooked dinner for me, let's say, um, it might be, okay, we have a good relationship and I feel comfortable talking to you about something that astonishes me in the soup. I reveal some Thing about myself when I say there's something green in my soup I might be telling the other person indirectly huh I'm a little bit confused or I'm a little bit insecure I'm not sure if I should try this I don't think I like it so immediately the other person gets something about myself from this message and last but not least there's an appeal there's a call to action what do I and is this green thing in my soup? Okay, so even though I don't ask them, I'm still telling them something. So they might react and tell me, oh yeah, that's broccoli, don't worry about it, even though I have never actually asked them what it is. And this is a very subconscious process that we automatically do. Now, with many things that happen subconsciously, this is also where things can go wrong, and this is where misunderstandings can happen. Because when you think about these four sides of the message, I might want to emphasize on a specific one, but maybe my recipient listens to a completely different side of this message. And so he might be feeling, for example, that I need them to react, that I want them to do something, even though I only wanted to reveal something about myself and I just wanted to share how I feel about a situation. And this is something um, that happens a lot in teams right, that we miscommunicate and that we don't get our messages out right. So this is a little bit the background, this is a little bit the basics, let's say, of where these misunderstandings come from. Misunderstandings come from a discrepancy between the side that the sender focuses on and the side that the recipient of a message listens to the most. The second and last thing for today that I wanted to mention in terms of communication is the famous iceberg. So some of you might have heard of the iceberg model in communication. Let me tell you very quickly what it is about. The iceberg model basically says that um, there's a certain percentage of our communication that is above the surface, just like that percentage of the iceberg uh, that you can see above water. But there is a much larger part of this iceberg that is hidden, that is underneath the surface. However, both parts of the iceberg influence our communication and therefore they influence our relationships and sort of, um, yeah, the relations we have with other team members as well. To give you some examples of the visible communication, so the top part of the iceberg, that is verbal communication, the conversations we have, nonverbal communication, so something that people can see um, from our body language, for example. It's the language that we use. Registers. Registers in linguistics means how formal or informal my language is. Body language, facial expressions, and gestures. So what is going on in my face, what is going on in my body, and what is going on with my hands 
whilst I talk. These are all things that the people we communicate with can directly detect by looking at us. The hidden part of the iceberg are, for example, emotions, experiences, prejudices that we bring, opinions that we have, expectations, fears, so something that we are scared or afraid of, beliefs, values, wishes, past situations that we have encountered, commitments that we have made, and obligations that we have for whatever reason. So the top part of the iceberg is really what people can detect directly. And the bottom part is what people bring into a situation. That's what people bring when you communicate with them, but you might necessarily know about these things. To give you a simple example, let's say you arrive at university one morning and you meet your friend outside the classroom and you ask them a very simple question and they give you a very rude answer and you're like wow okay why is that person so rude to me this is really inappropriate what you might not know is maybe that this morning they had already had an argument with their family uh, they spilled their coffee on the way to university and they realized that um, they forgot to hand in an important paper now obviously that's not an excuse for them being rude those are two different things however it might be an explanation and knowing about these past situations and emotions that someone brings into communication can help you better understand where they're coming from and what they actually say there's a word for understanding both parts of the iceberg and it's what we call emotional intelligence i'm sure you've all heard about emotional intelligence Mastering that being an emotionally intelligent person means understanding the hidden part of the iceberg, means an advantage for teamwork as well. So far, so good for communication. Now let's talk about becoming a team. I'm sure all of you have worked in a team before, maybe at university, uh, maybe at school, maybe you've had to perform a group task, maybe you've done an internship, possibly you've worked on a project with some friends or even family members. And there are two situations. The first situation is that you choose who you work with. So for example, at uni, you get to choose who you want to do a specific project with and you choose your best friend and you guys get along great and the project is a complete success. However, in most situations, you do not get to make that choice. Other people make that choice for you. What that means is that you work in an organization and you don't know who your colleagues are going to be, right? So you just literally get thrown into a room and into a situation with people that you have never met before, people that you don't know, you don't know anything about their beliefs, about their personalities, um, about who they are and why they are like that. And at the same time, people expect from you to succeed as a group. That sounds pretty crazy, right? I mean, how are you going to do that really? Just like a random bunch of strangers and they say, okay, now you guys build a successful team, please, and make sure that the hospital is running fine, make sure that the company is doing a good job, make sure that the agency is getting new clients. I mean, 